IBM Tivoli Storage Manager for Virtual Environments version 7.1. Data protection for VMware. First, I will log into the new web client interface. This is a new interface which we have introduced in version 7.1 and it is based on the Dojo technology. My first task will be to start a backup. So I navigate to the backup tab and create a new backup schedule. This will start a wizard which will allow me to create a backup schedule. I give it a name, in my case, daily backup, and I can also enter a short description like run daily. The next step is to define what I would like to back up. So I want to back up all newly added virtual machines that might uh, be deployed on a particular ESX a server and I am also selecting one virtual machine called VHull and that's where I'm going to back up. Here I can select a data mover node which is basically a backup process that will run. I can then also define when I want to run the backup whether I want an incremental backup and periodic full backup or an incremental forever backup. Now I am presented with the summary and I can just simply click on OK and the backup will start immediately. I can monitor the backup task right from here and I can see the process as it goes along. I am using this wizard here but you could also schedule the backup schedule through the command line or you can just set it up once and run it in predefined intervals. So I can see that my backup was successful. I can actually scroll down and get some more information about the backup. This was an incremental forever backup. And since I have that in my repository now, I can actually restore this one. So I navigate to the Restore tab. I select then all my available recovery points. I am selecting Active Backups Only. And here I can find under my ESX Server vSphere 2 my virtual machine that I've just backed up. In a production environment, you would most likely select all VMs on that host. Um, but for timing reasons, I have just one here. And my restore point was the one that I just took. I select that one and click on restore. Another wizard pops up and I can actually define the types of restores which I want to perform. I could do a full VM restore. And we talk about the other options later. And I will restore to an alternate location so I am entering a new name here. That's a new name for the individual VM. I'm restoring it to the same ESX host from where it came. Now I'm getting a summary. New underscore VM is how I want to call this virtual machine. And I can again monitor the restore task now. and it was not yet successful. It is being processed, but now it's also showing me a success. And I can actually click on it and again get some further information about that particular restore. Now let's take a look into vCenter. In vCenter, I can now find under the discovered virtual machines a new virtual machine called new VM from daily. The original VM was called VHall. So I've basically now restored VHall under a different name. And here we can we can see the uh, attributes. I could have also restored it to the same name as it was before. I've just chosen to restore it under a different name. Now let's look at some other restore options. We've just performed a full VM level restore. 
And now I would like to perform an instant access or an instant restore of another virtual machine. I am picking Win XP VM1. I also have an available restore point here. I click on restore. I see the same dialog as before. It tells me about the source. And now here I'm going to choose full VM instant access. I could have also chosen full VM instant restore, which is very similar. So I finally choose VM instant access. I don't want to start the virtual machine after creation. And I'm also giving this virtual machine a new name. And I call it instant access VM. And I just go back on the original location. I could have picked a different location here. And now I see my summary. And now I have an instant access. We can again monitor this. and it is in progress. It will take seconds to minutes and it was successful right now. My instant access is available. What instant access means is that the virtual machine is actually not being recovered. It's just being made available to look into it, to do a verification, or to log into it. So in this case, the TSM server acts as a data store and provides instant access to that machine. So if we then take a look into vCenter, the virtual machine instant access VM shows up as if it would have been restored, but it's actually not restored, it's still sitting in the TSM server and I can actually even power it on if I choose to do so. I could have also chosen to do an instant restore, which is basically the same thing, except that we also, under the covers, transparently restore that virtual machine. Now let's, cl let's click on instant access restore status. I can now, right from our graphical user interface, see how many virtual machines are being mounted at this point in time. So we can see that the virtual machine that we just mounted is here. And we can now get some details about it. Um, and we can also unmount it from here. Unmounting it basically means we're, we're freeing it up again and it will not show um, an, in vCenter uh, anymore. So the whole process allows me to work with a virtual machine as it would have been restored even though it still sits inside the TSM server and is available from here. We even allow read-write transactions during this process and we can also restore it. This is a new feature that we have introduced in TSM for Virtual Environments version 7.1. So the cleanup again also shows up as a progress so you can monitor the product right from here. That again is our new web client interface. Everything I'm showing here can also be done through command line if you wish to do so. Okay, now let's look at some other features. So we can actually see the data center occupancy here, which helps with uh, licensing. And we can see that my uh, occupancy is uh, two gigabyte. We can also click to recent tasks and get an overview of everything that we've done in a certain time frame. And we can also log back into vCenter. And here you might notice that 
that virtual machine that I had available for instant access is now gone. So it's really, it has been dismounted. And we can also see under the recent tasks in vCenter what happened in vCenter. So every task that we perform, that TSM for VE performs, is also being displayed uh, within uh, vCenter. And you can actually um, see the actions that we have done. We use iSCSI mounting technology under the covers in order to get access to that virtual machine that I, that I showed in this, in this case. There is also a backup status tab which allows us to select a report and we have new reports in version 7.1 and they're listed here and we can actually uh, show successful backups and unsuccessful backups and we can also see if some virtual machines like in my case are not not they were not backed up so they show show up as no backup so they're not protected however the one that I just backed up shows as current meaning I have a valid backup. Let's look at one more function of the product. This is not a new function. This is a function that has always been available. And it is actually individual file level recovery of an individual file within a virtual machine backup. In order to do that, I run our recovery agent and I select a TSM server. So I want to connect to a TSM server here and I can then select the virtual machine from which I want to restore individual files. I can select the disk on that virtual machine. So it happens so that I have two, uh, uh, two snapshots here and one of them has a disk in it. If I would have multiple disks, um, um, multi multiple selections would show up here. So I can select this one and I can mount it as a new drive letter. And I'm choosing X here. So I'm mounting this backup onto my local machine under the drive letter X. And we can see it's mounted right here. I can run this recovery agent from inside the guest, from a proxy, from basically from any machine. And now I have a local disk X. That's a mounted snapshot that is not being restored that does sit inside the TSM server. So at this point in time, nothing has been physically restored. I'm just looking into the virtual machine. And as you can see, I can browse the machine or that drive as it would be just a local drive. I can basically go back and forth, go through all the folders, and also restore an individual file. So whichever file I, I choose, I can copy and paste back. So I'm choosing a DLL here, and I'm just basically dropping this onto my local desktop. So I perform a copy and paste option, and that's how simple it is to perform individual file level recovery. That was it. I can then also go in here and then, of course, dismount that volume. And once I've done that, it will disappear from my Windows Explorer in this particular case. We offer similar capabilities for individual file level recovery also for Linux virtual machines. And as you can see, the X drive now has disappeared. So thank you very much for your attention.